And you can't throw that first strike. Now you're going to heap a trouble. Petrinsky will go out for a chat. And guys, keep in mind, the control of this Texas staff has been close to impeccable the last two starts. Texas State, no walks issued. And then last night, a single walk issued to TCU. It's always a, a reason for success when you're on the mound, giving up extra base runs. That's a dangerous pitch right here. From Cypress, Texas, Riser started his career at Louisiana, transferred to Blinn, and is now here. Big opportunity for TCU. 2-0. And three balls, no strikes to the number five hitter with nowhere to put him. I think that was over the plate, but since DJ was set up outside, he reached half a, a foot back across the plate, made it look like a ball. Comes back with a strike to make it 3-1. Well, there ain't nothing fancy about this. This is good old-fashioned baseball because you got to throw a strike, and as a hitter, I'm, I'm, I'm geared up for your heater. And that is a bases-loaded walk. Back-to-back -back walks will make it one nothing TCU as the Horn Frogs striking first via the free pass. But this was set up with the back-to-back -back knocks by Watson and Balta. And this has been the biggest challenge for Sugar. When he gets into jams, how quickly can he get out of them? Was not able to do that in his last start against Texas Tech. When it unraveled, it got bad. Eight earned runs allowed in that start. Strike one to Zach Humphreys. Horn Frog 16 and 3 guys when they score first and they're on the board first here. And it's 1-1. One, one. So 21 and 6 when scoring first, 16 and 3 when they score in the first inning. Yeah, first inning. <laughs> You still have to trust your fastball. You do. And he does, and it works. One, two. Humphrey's only hitting 232, but with runners in scoring position 321 on the year. And Reynolds will come home, force out, and they get one. No hesitation from Reynolds there as he knew exactly where to go. That's the play you have right coming in towards home. It's an easy play, but watch, watch Watson right here. He's, he's going to throw his hands up and take three more steps. That could have been the runner's interference. That's right Balta there. there, throwing his hands up. Balta. You see it late right there. I, he took a few steps after he raised his hands. Yeah. Trying to get his up, get in the throw, but it, it you know, obviously didn't affect it because they got the out. If it had hit him, then you might have a conversation. How big is this at bat right here? Well, you know, for both sides. I mean, it's huge for, for TCU, for one hundred to do something, but for Texas, I mean, you can, you can limit the damage right here to one. Wow. Out of my, out of my Into the change up there. Nearly a 30 pitch first inning, though, for Chase. Ooh, your bullpen's fresh. Yep. Hamilton with the backhand to first. Offline, one run scores. Here comes another, and it's 3 nothing TCU. As Hamilton got there in time, appeared that if the throw was online, they would have been out of the inning. But McKenzie had to come off the bag and could not get there. 
Well, he has to go deep in the hole here as he plants his foot trying to get his target knowing he's got to get rid of it in a hurry. It just carries up the line. He, he didn't get his head around right here to see his target by the time he gets around and the throw starts to, to fade into the runner. A couple runs will score. Not sure that won't be a base hit. E6 allows the second run to score. That's the way I would score it. See what they call it. Straight up E. Court says E6. To McKenzie, that will be foul. So let's take another look at this play. David Hamilton into the hole. He might have been able to go to Reynolds right there to get the out. But you got to be thinking about that, Greg, before the ball's hit. Hey, if I go hard to my right, can I get an out at third base? It, because it, your instincts are to go across the diamond when you go in the hole. And how many times have we seen Hamilton make that exact play? Well, he was stretched out. He just had a tough time getting his head around to find his target before the ball came out of his hands. 30 pitches now in the frame. Brings up Adam Oviedo. And it's 1 2. Doing a nice job over the Horn Frogs seeing pitches. Taking advantage of the two walks in the inning and the miscue. They've been a very good team on the year in terms of drawing walks. That's not something that Coach Moziello necessarily stresses, drawing walks, but vision is a big part of that as Juan Hanen is in the second safely. Here with two outs, 33 pitches. So far, 17 have been balls. Hard to have success with that ratio. Well, a base hit right here, and TCU's got a 5 0 lead. And down on strikes. Second strikeout for Sugar on the inning. But Watson and Balta got it started with base knocks. Control issues led to one run, and then the throw gets away. Two more for TCU, it's 3 0. Welcome back to Texas Baseball on Longhorn Network. Coach Pierce out for a little chat, perhaps talking about the hands of A.J. Balta coming up. We'll look at that a little later in the broadcast. TCU, though, striking first to make it 3 nothing. So work to do here for this Texas lineup. And Duke Ellis has been outstanding in Big 12 play alone. He's third in the conference in batting average. Well, he's done a nice job second half of the season. He's made good adjustments as the year's gone on. And we talked about a month ago, Texas 26 and 9 in their last 35 games after starting the season 9 and 9. So you look at that scenario right there. What has happened? You have guys that have got to step up. We've seen what Cody and Zach have done. And they, they've had good years. But you're seeing some other guys now getting involved. Hamilton, Ellis, Hibbler last night with a big night driving in two. Jake Eisler will be on the mound for the Horned Frogs. Sophomore out of Littleton, Colorado. Great numbers. Does he, This is his third start of the season, but in 30 innings, guys, he's got two walks and 44 strikeouts. A couple starts ago against Lamar. Went six innings to get up his one hit, struck out 12. Good stuff. It, had some injuries to that starting rotation. Give this guy an opportunity. He's taking advantage of it. Yes, and it's swing and miss stuff as he faces David Hamilton. Ball one. He got into the game against Texas Tech three appearances ago in the fourth inning. Struck out 11 of the 15 batters he faced. Then against Lamar, faced 18 batters. Struck out 12 of them in that stretch, gave up one hit, and then picked the dude off once he got on base. That's just unfair. And an outside strike call to make it 1-2 to Hamilton. 
pretty good sinker to go with the break. <laughs> it's a real good sinker. You don't see the breaking ball too much to lefties. Might not need it much when you have that sinker. There's the slider right there. And that slider, that's the big pitch for Iceland. Yeah, if you get if you see it early in the game, if you see some swing and miss and swing over the top of it, sometimes it has a tendency just a roll in there. Full count to the guy teammates called D him. Just reaching out and touching it, and it works. Big turnaround first. Just a little look at second as Hamilton, full count. Base hit to left. That's the thing of beauty right there. Well, he kept his hands back. Ooh. And he's looking for, he's right. seen, seen five sinkers in the at bat. Watch his hands stay back. If you try to pull that ball, Greg, oh. you're out. Good to see his hands stay back, lets the ball get deep. That's exactly what he wanted to do right there. It's 15 love. He served that in. <laughs> and the Big 12 leader in stolen bases could be looking for 28. Ellis the bunt right back to Isla. He'll have to hurry. Makes the throw in time. And there's one down. Hamilton advances to score in position, however. Well, it's so important to answer. Get momentum on your side if you're Texas. Greg, there's many times and you've been on the road as a starting pitcher. You've been staked to a lead. The one thing you thought in your mind is I always want to put a zero up, yes. especially with the lead, because now pressure starts to mount against that home team. Well, momentum. You have momentum right now if you're the TCU. Yeah, Texas could just score one, but the momentum would shift to there. It would. It? All of a sudden, all right, these guys are still in this thing. And with the speed of Hamilton and the bat of Clemens, this is a combination that can switch momentum and has very quickly throughout the course of this season. One one to the Dick Hauser semifinalist. Clemens up for one of the most prestigious awards in college baseball. It has been an unreal junior season for Cody Clemens, youngest son of Roger. This one's popped up. Josh Watson under it. And there's two down. Change up, had him out front. Good pitch. It's, it can be really good because it looks like the sinker. Looks like the one going away from him, the fastball out of his hand. The first time you've seen a guy, Hamilton did a nice shot because he saw five fastballs in his at bat going the other way. The left handed hitters for Texas, are, they all get in the dugout and they all come back and talk to each other. Say, Can't think about pulling this guy because a guy's throwing that good a sinker. If you put, try to pull him, you're going to be in big trouble. Now we'll probably see the slider with the right handed hitters coming up. There it is. A big cut from tight. Zach Zubia. That's the tight one that Bill Moziello was talking about. So you'll know you'll, you'll know early if, if that one if they're swinging and missing it's a good one so be just under 300 this season double digit home runs he has struggled with runners in scoring position since April 1st just 138 in these types of situations inside for ball one told you coach Schlossnagel at his son's high school graduation you guys are pretty sure he knows it's three nothing TCU right now I mean oh. he's keeping track of the game somehow right Schlo Schlossnagel is the S's so it'll be a while before he walks the stage yeah, <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure somebody's letting him know fire up that ESPN app on the phone yes hard to pick up that one right there it's got depth to it too Greg that, that's the part 
it's not a sweeper. It's not sweeping across the zone. It's got that depth at the end where it goes down as well. And that's what caused you to swing and miss it. Eisler for the 2 2 delivery. Zubia to third. Shepard across the diamond, and that will do it. So Texas follows the script, a recipe for success. They get the leadoff hitter on, they move him over. However, cannot bring him in. 3 0 TCU. I got the baseball on Longhorn Network is brought to you by Coors Light, official sponsor of the Texas Longhorns, and Whataburger. The perfectly spicy Buffalo Ranch Chicken Strip Sandwich is back only at Whataburger. Looking at shots of last time Texas hosted a regional. That was back in 2011. Lost the first game. Came back to win that regional. Hosted the Supers against Arizona State. That series was a classic. Went the distance. Texas ended up taking down the Sun Devils to punch that ticket to Omaha. And it's Chase Sugar. Hits Connor Shepard on the initial offering of the top of the second. Now, there have been issues for Texas in the conference standings since winning that Big 12 title in 2011. We we're talking about not too long ago in 2013, this was a Texas team that did not qualify for the Big 12 tournament. Ninth, fifth, fifth, seventh, sixth in year number one again with Coach Pierce. And now they are locked in to at least being in second place. Runner is in motion. This is going to be tough. Hamilton gives it a look, but comes across to McKenzie at first. Cannot get the out at second. Well, there is one down. Well, that's the Horn Frog style. They're, they're going to put pressure on you, Greg. They're going to put people in motion. A little hit and run right here. And you stay out of the double play that way, get a runner in the score position. But you really, you're not bunting in that scenario because that ball gets through your first and third and nobody out. That will bring up Josh Watson. Had a double down the line all the way to the fence his first time up. He became the first runner to score for the Frogs. Meanwhile, with Texas struggling in the Big 12, it's created opportunity for other programs, and TCU is the program that really has emerged at the forefront of the Big 12. You cannot overlook four straight runs to Omaha. Go back to 2010, beat Texas here in the Supers to get to Omaha as well, to go with that in this decade. Bryce Elder, Elder's up in the pin for Texas. And that pitch count now up to 39 for Sugar. And there's only one down here at the top of the second. Three free passes, back-to-back -back walks, one loaded the bases, one scored the first run, and then led off this top of the second by getting the jersey of Shepard. Three free passes after there was just one walk issued by the Texas pitchers over the last two games. Down on strikes is Watson. Strikeout number three for Sugar. A lot of off speed from Chase tonight. First pitch was a break. The ball went to the changeup. Got him out there with a the curveball. Not in a great location. No. I think Shadow could have played a little bit with that one. Third strikeout, though. Brings up Balta. Looks at strike one. And there's the shadow, shadow yeah. Tough to, you always say it's on, tough to pick up spin. Spin. That shadow affect the catcher much? It does, but you know what pitch is coming, so you, you, you've got an idea that you know where the ball is going to come out of his hands, and it, it can affect the umpire as well. 
but more as a hitter where you you're not sure what's coming fastball breaking ball change up. To left Hibbler took a step in then has to retreat but makes the catch. So a leadoff hit batter leads to nothing. Nine pitches in the second for Sugar. It's three nothing frauds. Bottom of the second here at UFCU Dish Fog Field. Game number two between Texas and TCU and the Horn Frogs off to the three nothing lead. You can see the flags at half mast out in center field as we remember the lives lost in the high school shooting this afternoon at Santa Fe High School in Santa Fe, Texas, between Houston and Galveston. This comes at a time that should be a celebration of the next chapter in life, as graduation was set for this weekend. However, unfortunately, once again, we are grieving over the loss of life. Our thoughts and prayers to the Santa Fe community and everyone affected by the senseless violence earlier today. Mason Hibbler will lead off the bottom of the second against Jake Eisler. The Longhorns got their leadoff batter on in the first, moved him over, couldn't get anything out of him. We've got a good crowd here. You'd like to get this crowd, you know, obviously when you give up three in the first, yep. the first thing it does, it sort of takes the crowd out of it. So hopefully it gets something going here offensively, some excitement. Get this crowd into it, start putting some pressure. That's what a home crowd does for you. If, if you can, but you got to ignite them with your play to get that crowd going. Hibbler was a guy that did that last night, had the solo home run and the sack fly to shortstop. It was a misplay between shortstop Oviedo, left field Watson last night, off the bat of Hibbler, where Short took it, had a bad angle, coming back to home, and it was just deep enough to allow Austin Todd to score from third base. I don't see many sack flies to Short as Hibbler is down on strikes. Strikeout number one for Eisler. Throwing him three sliders. Right here, just elevates with a fastball. See Humphrey's back there, wants it a little higher, but he's got enough on that fastball after seeing a few straight sliders. Plus, you're probably looking for that slider as well. I he's got a swing and miss when you, it's hard not to look for it. It's now 45 strikeouts on the year for Eisler with only two walks. A crazy thing going into that appearance a few games back for him against Texas Tech opponents were hitting 377 against him. That's not too long ago. He's been so dominant in this recent run that is now down to 257. He's finding his niche as a starter. Reynolds big swing and a miss. One two. Ryan working all through the year on hitting on both sides of the plate. Of course last year as a freshman he was a switch hitter all year. This week made the decision, felt like he was more comfortable going back to the plate as a left-handed hitter against right-handed pitcher. And it's now 46 strikeouts and two walks for Eisler. Back-to-back -back fashion with Hibbler and Reynolds going down. Got a couple base knocks against Texas State. We started going back to that left yep. side. Two outs now for DJ Petrinsky. Ball one. Ball's carrying to left, so it's one of those nights you can get back in this game. It's a team that's it's shown the ability to hit the ball, the ballpark. He has a good slider. We've seen it. If he hangs it, you got to take advantage of it. You, you got to jump on it. And that fastball right there was right there. He's making good pitches. But when he makes that mistake, you have to take advantage of it. Hey, 
Doing a pretty good job of mixing right now, though, Greg. It, he's using his fastball in counts that usually call for the slider. One, two. What does Eisler go with here? Coming in. Went away. And it works. He strikes out the side. Starts off with Mason Hibbler coming up and going down, swinging. Next up, Reynolds looking. And Petrinsky also taking his hacks, but it ain't working against Eisler. This is what you want if you're a baseball fan in Austin, Texas. A late season game that means a ton because of this, the Big 12 standings. Texas, one game behind Oklahoma State. Both teams going into their second to last game of the regular season. TCU back there at 10 and 11, five and a half back. So meanwhile, TCU trying to get back into contention for the NCAAs as this one is lifted to Duke Ellis in right field off the bat of Landis Toy. You have Texas that's vying for the Big 12 championship with Oklahoma State, but with the Cowboys having that one game lead, it's in their control. They've got a 3-1 lead over Texas Tech. If the Pokes can win tonight and tomorrow, does not matter what Texas does, they are the outright Big 12 champs. And we already know they're gonna be in the evening bracket in Oklahoma City for the Big 12 tournament. Texas is gonna be, because they are, no matter what, are the number two, at least the one, are yeah. the two seed. So they're going to be in the morning bracket. They're going to be in the second game in the morning bracket. And one or two, I mean, we know it hasn't been a great year from top to bottom in the Big 12, but would you say that's a pretty big deal for this program in year number two under David Pierce? Well, I can say this. The, the, the committee that gets together that chooses the host sites and everything is the Big 12. If you finish in the top two in the Big 12 in the, in the recent years, in this decade, you have hosted a regional. So... It tells you a whole lot. Texas is going to be the number two seed in the Big 12 tournament. So do you feel that that gets them pretty close to being a lock with the recent history well, to host? It was. It's one of those things that you never say that it's a lock, but you look at the scenario over the last few years, it, it has been a lock for teams who finished second in the Big 12. And they're not saying they're not finished second. They still have their shot. There's a lot of ball game left here. David Hamilton. And Riser is down for the second out. So that would be an interesting scenario because you would have Oklahoma State and Texas with that recent history hosting, but also that third team out there like Texas Tech. Well, they, every projection that, that I've looked at, at Greg, you're the same way. We're, we're studying this all the time, trying to figure this out. It has Tech already they still have them locked in stone. Possibly yeah. the top eight seed. <laughs> top eight national seed. So now could you see the committee taking the second place team in the Big 12, in this case, potentially Texas, over the team that won the Big 12? Hold that thought for the next half inning as Hamilton across the diamond to retire Zach Humphreys. So nine innings, uh, excuse me, nine pitches to seven pitches for Sugar. So we know that this resume is good enough to get Texas into the tournament. Big question now, is it good enough to make them a regional host for the first time since 2011? 35 and 18 overall, 15 and seven in the Big 12. That's second right now. The RPI is at 17. Strength of schedule is at 20, and they're 10 and 13 against top 50 teams in the RPI. The point you've made, Keith, is also the way they finished this season. And that's what the selection committee looks at a well, lot. Go back, just look at it this way for me. If you're, I'm on the selection committee, you're nine and nine. This team was nine and nine after the first 18 games. Since then, they're 26 and nine. So they have, they have been one of the hotter teams in the nation during that stretch. And yeah, obviously their strength of schedule now is fi finally showing up. But, it has what been one of the best schedules when you travel on the road to play Arkansas two games you go to LSU you play Stanford a top five team in every poll in the in the nation all year all year yeah. so you, you you look at those, that scenario they, and then you have the, the Big 12 conference schedule of 24 games and you consider who the series wins are against series win against Oklahoma State series win against Texas Tech against Oklahoma yeah 
So they were beating the big dogs in the Big 12. Last time we saw Ice Larry. The Baylor Bears, one of the hot teams, too, here in the second half of the season. All Texas did to them is sweep them. And all that Eisler did was pretty much grab the broom and the bottom of the second as he struck out the side, Hibbler, Reynolds, and Petrinsky. 3-1 count. And he walked two all year. <laughs> Don't jinx the guy. I'm trying. No. I'll hold that thought, Tate Shaw. For the moment, it will stay at two walks. That was a good pitch. They called that one on David Hamilton. Lead off the game. Watch this pitch. Right on the corner. At the knees. Yeah, right there. And this time, Shaw will get the free pass. That is walk number three. So, let's go back to the conversation we started. Theoretically, let's say Texas does finish second behind Oklahoma State. Could you see a scenario that the selection committee chooses Texas to host over Oklahoma State? So the Big 12 champ does not host and the second place team does? Probably not. I, I, that would be true. I mean, I, I, and I, I think for the Big 12, for Texas to host the Big 12, more than likely, uh, Texas needs to win the conference outright, and then Oklahoma State will not be a host. They'll be a two seat somewhere. Can you see this being a three-bid conference in terms of three teams hosting? I think that's going to be a stretch. I, I, I'm not sure the power numbers for the conference are good enough for that. 0-1 to McKenzie. He bunts. It's a good one. Humphreys calls off. Eisler makes a heck of a throw for the out. Great communication there between the battery mates, Eisler and Humphreys. Well, it's so much of easier play, Lowell, for the catcher. He's coming out, his momentum, he can get around it, go to first base. As a pitcher, you've got to come in and stop, turn, and get your shoulders turned, but you do communicate. Much easier play for the catcher. He had to go barehanded there. It's the only chance to get an out. Second time in the ball game, Texas has moved a runner into scoring position. First time was the bottom of the first inning with Hamilton getting on, Ellis moving him over. Texas could not punch it in. Now Hamilton will bunt. This is a high bouncer and foul. Tried to run a breaking ball that time. You talk to guys that are good bunters, they want to bunt the fastball just like they want to hit the fastball because they know where it's going to be because you're moving and your eyes are moving because you're moving in the box getting ready to run. So you want the ball to be in, in that spot that you're anticipating. So breaking balls a lot of times are hard to bunt. Hamilton has one of the largest hits of the year. But you look at the Horn Frogs as well. Four consecutive trips to the College World Series. They're in the same scenario. Last night was a big blow to them because now they're a game under in conference play. Ten games over 500 as a team. So they need these couple of wins here to put themselves in position to go to Oklahoma City. And then once they get there, they still have a lot of work to do. They, they got to make a deep run. Popped up, Riser takes care of it. So Texas now down to their final out here in the bottom of the third with that leadoff runner over there at second base. That says a lot about the state of TCU baseball that perhaps missing a regional is a big deal. Oh, it is a big deal. They've been one of the premier programs in the country in the decades of the, from 2010 on. They've made five appearances at the College World Series. My point being, great job building this program and building those expectations by Coach Lashnay. Oh, no doubt. No doubt about it. And it. You know, they've been reasonably healthy each and every year over the last few years. And it caught up to them this year. Where, I mean, you lose some of the names that are not here, Greg. Right. You gosh. lose Luke and Baker, Jared Janzak. It's tough when you're talking about your top hitter and top pitcher. Closer's not here this weekend. Yeah. 
I'm hoping to and get that Durbin Felton back cop. next week. How important that he's almost yeah. unhittable. So mix and match and just try to find a way. And also don't forget they lost a lot from their CWS team a year ago. And down on strikes, big hack from Ellis. Once again, leadoff hitter on to second base. Nothing to show for it, three nothing TCU. Those injuries that TCU has had to deal with, unfortunately, this season, Luke and Baker, career numbers, 19 home runs, 103 RBI. That's a lot of production. They lose him with a broken leg in mid-April. Jared Janzak, season-ending surgery for thoracic outlet syndrome. That's their top pitcher. And then the closer, Feltman, has been out now for three weeks with blister issues and a shoulder strain. They're hoping to get him back next week in Oklahoma City. So your top hitter, arguably your ace, and your closer all missing time. And it's hard, especially at a program like TCU, when you consider academics, tuition, the dynamics in play in Fort Worth, it is more difficult for them to build up depth on their roster. As Juan Hanen rounds out the Hamilton. Seven straight. Retired. It's, it's hard for everybody to build depth on 11 points up. Yeah. yeah. Let's just, just be honest. You know, because that's all. That's all. That's all the scholarships that baseball receives. Brings up Oviedo. But let's get back to Sugar now. So a nine pitch inning followed by a seven pitch inning. What's worked? What has clicked for Sugar? I felt early. He he just he got hit with the fastball and went away from it. Started throwing the off speed, got behind with that. Now you have to throw a fastball, then it gets hit. And he's just one pitch, one throw from David Hamilton, just giving up one run. One run, yeah. So it was back to back base hits by Watson and Balta. He then walked Landestoy and Riser. The walk to Riser scored the first run. And not a, got a force out at home to make it two outs. As Oviedo goes down on strikes. And then the ball off the bat of Juan Han, and it was a tough play for Hamilton. And his throw was off the mark, which led to two runs. Yeah, hind hindsight, probably should have went to third. But you did, it, that is really, you have to have anticipated that in your mind rather than reacting to the ball. You have to say, if I have to go hard right here, and sometimes I mean, shortstops will look at the third baseman. Man, if I go hard here, right. I'm coming to you. Coming to you. And and just you have to you have to put that in your mind before the play happens. Would have been a much easier play to get an out. And Ryan had to be there. Ryan was still trying to find yeah. the bag. And as we said at the time, he's made that play oh, he's consistently all season. Reynolds had a heck of a defensive play in the ninth inning last night on a slow roller. So this one goes off the foot of Shepard. And then the catch by Shaw out in center field for the final out. Dramatic moment there. That ball was hit on a line. And by the way, Austin Todd is out with a separated shoulder. Made a diving attempt at a catch. And somehow his arm, even though with the glove it was sliding on the turf, it's somehow, and when you watch the video, it's tough to explain how it happened. It gets sucked back under him, even though he's sliding cleanly on that glove. And it ended up separating that shoulder, was not able to finish the game. Shepard staying alive. So that clap from Shepard there, you could hear it up here in our booth. It seems like this crowd, though, is looking for a reason to get into the game. It's a really nice size crowd. We know it can be loud. Very good crowd tonight. It's one of those deals, though, waiting for that moment to get loud. Clemens, Zubia, Hibbler. Coming up in the bottom of the fourth, Sugar trying to take care of Shepard here. Oh. 
There's that clap again. It is a loud clap. Everybody's got a routine. Chase threw 17 balls in that first inning. He's only thrown seven balls since. So he's been attacking, going right at him. Clemens has it. With that, it's retired nine in a row. So I guess you could say he's cruising now. We can talk to that man, Bill Moziello, when we return here at the dish. I can't. Jim Schlossnagel missing his first game in his 28 year coaching career for a good reason. His son Jackson is graduating high school tonight, Trinity Valley High School in Fort Worth. So we've got Bill Moziello on the headset. Hey, coach, what are the chances that Schlosh knows the score right now? Uh, he's, he's the biggest social media guy in the country, so I'm sure he knows pitch by pitch. So, yeah, there's no doubt he knows the score. Hey, Bill, one of the things you talked to us earlier is find a way to manufacture. Do the little things. You're taking some pitches, try to put some hit and runs on, use your speed, just trying to create some opportunities offensively. Yeah, without a question, like I said, that's what we do. That's that's what we're known for, and we need to get some big hits when it counts. But uh, I still, I'll take a couple home runs, but um, we were fortunate to scratch in a few runs in that first. Coach, we'll let you get back to it. We appreciate it. All right, it. guys, thanks. This man has been... Lights out, Jake Eisler. He's allowed one hit thus far. It was a leadoff single that David Hamilton really had to work for. Reach out there, bases, uh, excuse me, full count situation. Twice the runners have gotten on. Another time was Tate Shaw drawing a leadoff walk an inning ago, but nothing to show for it thus far. Left-handers have got to think the other way, Lowell, to have success. Eisler has got an outstanding sinker. Clemens flew out to left his first time up. Got one to hit right there. He did. The slider's a good pitch, Greg, there's no doubt, and it's got depth to it. But his out pitch to left-handers is not his slider. No. It's that sinker ball. Sinker running away, mixing in with the changeup. That's what he got Cody out first at bat. Be really careful with that one. Four strikeouts for Eisler. That goes a long way. The last two innings. 3-1. Good count for Clemens to do damage. And it's fouled over just in front of Occupy. And Smokey. And had home run depth. Let's, let's, start, yeah. let's start with that. Yeah, dude. Hashtag. Full count to Clements. Hit well in the gap. Watson on the run. Off the wall. A BB shot from Clements. And he's in with a leadoff double. Have to go the other way. Ball's carrying really well. He caught it a little bit out on the end of the bat, but he didn't think about pulling it. And we've seen Cody all year long have power the other way. And I like his front side staying in there. If he tries to pull that, Greg, that's a ground ball to second. It's a foot from being out, out of the park. On a line. Yeah. Right where the flags have picked up. So will this be the spark the crowd here in Austin needed? Double number 12. Like Zonk said, the lefties, it, it takes away the, the, the slider for the most part to lefties. He has thrown it to righties. Zubia through the hole. Clemens will hold up at third. Runners on the corner. No outs. Good piece of hitting there from Zach Zubia. All of a sudden you're hearing that crowd get into it. Now you're going to see how your guy responds, Greg. The guy on the mound's been dominant. He had given up one hit through the first three frames. Now he gives up back-to-back -back hits. One of them a double. Now you have first and third. Nobody out. This is always when I I look at a pitcher and see his, watch his mound presence, watch how he handles himself from this point on. Big opportunity for Mason Hibbler. Did not play in games like this a year ago at Odessa College. I tell you what, if you're looking breaking ball, that's the one you gotta explode on. Eisler's just getting under it now. This three in a row that hasn't been that sharp late bite. Yeah, that, Kirk Sarlis, we'll yeah, talk to him. That's why he's a really good pitching coach. He, 
And they've had such great staffs. He's seen the same thing we're, we're seeing. Just getting underneath his hand, his top of his hand, underneath the ball instead of on top of the ball. That's causing it to, to hang and not have the good late bite to it. He's pretty animated in one of his mound visits last night. One of the top pitching coaches in America talking to the coaching staff before the start of this game. That's what they pointed out. This program has been built on pitching. Three, this three. is good development for Texas. It is now tied. Texas Tech and Oklahoma State at three in the top of the third inning. Texas needs at least Oklahoma State to drop one of the last two games to give it a shot to share the Big 12 title. 0-1 to Hibbler. Crowd coming to life. Oh, that was inside, and Hibbler tried to turn around on it. Well, that's a backup slider. We, you and I have had that conversation before. If a pitcher could know how to throw that, <laughs> it would eat me up alive because you see spin, Lowell, and all of a sudden it starts backing into you instead of breaking away, that's and right. it just ties you up. That's why Mason was going after it because he thought it was coming right back. It was, it was going to be a hanger. But it backed up and it worked for Iceland. Upstairs, ball one. He's underneath this fastball there, too. Thank you. Still have to look out over the plate there. Hitler went from playing in front of crowds of about 10 to 15. This packed house here on a Friday night in Austin to center. It drops. Texas is on the board. Tied him up inside, almost the same pitch. It, 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 Hipper fought off. This time he just gets enough of it. It's in on his hands. He pulls his hands in. It hits him still on the label. It gets nothing on it, but just that's enough a, to get it thing. over the infield. That's a good thing for Mason right. Hibbler in Texas. So the Longhorns have now scored four runs in this series. Hibbler has driven in three of them. Bunt situation here. I know that you look at the scenario, you've got a guy that's got some pop, but I think you move him up right here. Juan Hanen is creeping in. It is the bunt. The throw to third will not be in time. Well, it was in time. It was just offline. Well, Humphreys comes out. He, he really is good behind the plate. Bounces out there, gets it. What's his grip? Recognize it. And he's got the out at third. And, and then just, just rushes it at the last minute. Yeah, he just let that ball sail. Two seamer down there. Sidearmed it. Maybe Still going to be a close play. Maybe that's why it was wide. He sidearmed it. Big opportunity for Texas. Loaded for another Juco transfer, DJ Petrinsky. Strike one from Eisler. Well, DJ's had his struggles with runners in scoring position all season long. But boy, this is a big opportunity right here. You can make up for his struggles. Oh, yeah. Finding a way to come up with a base hit right here. with each swing. Kind of gone away from that slider. Losing the feel for it. It's got a good feel for that fastball now. Going to throw another one down the middle. And down on strikes, three straight pitches is Petrinsky. So now it's going to be up to the eight and nine hitters to make something out of this. Like Zonk said, you can't try to pull Eisler. You've got a big hole. You've got double play depth on the infield. You've got a big hole over there between short and third. Good speed with Tate Shaw. Ball one to Shaw. 
Really got to set your sights up, too. That's the other part as a left hander. You want to don't think about pulling and then make him get that sinker up out of the plate. That's a little shallow out there left, too. It's got a little more pop than that. You're right. Outside ball two. I look for that. I, I, I'm, my toes are on the right line. <laughs> Take shot. He comes in. Oh, he'll hit you. Let him come in. Humphreys out for the quick combo. Still almost 90 degrees, 89 degrees on the big board. You sit out there and throw 20 pitches in this kind of heat and humidity. <laughs> you need that little blow right there. Yes. That's a catcher going out and saying, all right, this is Cardio Vascular. Let's you back off and get your breath here. Slow roller. Going to be tough. The throw home is in time. And heads up play by Connor Shepard over a third. Not a ton of speed barreling home with Zach Zubia. That's a nice play. He knew where he was going to go with the baseball immediately. Sets his feet. Make sure you get one. He knew the runner. He knew the runner right there. It's up to the smartest kid on the diamond now, Jake McKenzie. Not walking in his commencement ceremony tonight so he could be here playing against TCU. And it carries honors with his graduation. Petroleum engineering major. 20th pitch coming right here from Eisler this inning. And it's 0-2. Right at the very top of the zone. Got to make contact here. The down 0-2, you got you to be a tough out right now and make contact. Sure, got both his toes on that white stripe. Good thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was running out of barrel right there. Choking up, you're up on the plate. The ball was three feet outside. See then anything that come bring it, try to throw a fastball in right here. Remember this moment in the game. 0 2 count from Eisler to McKenzie. To right field. Balta is there, and that is a huge win for Jake Eisler. Bases loaded, no outs, and they get out of it. The Longhorns loaded the bases, no outs. He had previously scored a run. But got nothing from that bases loaded situation. So it is TCU leading the Longhorns 3-1 to one here at the top of the fifth. Such an important game for both teams. As Texas trying to keep pace with Oklahoma State atop the Big 12 standings. And TCU trying to give themselves a chance to have a meaningful run in Oklahoma City, the Big 12 tourney, and get in as an at-large if they do not win the entire thing. Chase Sugar has really settled down. It was a rough first inning for him. A couple of walks couple of hits and a costly error ended up resulting in three runs for TCU you can see the second time through the lineup 0 for 9 until that bullwhip center field and a leadoff single the first time through the order for Chase he gave up those three runs had five base runners through four first pitch strikes second time through he had zeros across and eight first pitch strikes this is a threat right here. This is when TCU will get aggressive on the base pass. And Bullware has the speed to be on the move. 23 stolen bases, fourth most in the conference, fifth most 
among NCAA freshmen. Chase has got a quick move to, the, to first, but he is not quick to the plate. Check swing strike to Watson. Watson doubled down the line in the first inning, scored the first run of the game. Parker Joe Robinson now warming up for Texas. Saw Bryce Elder earlier, now Parker Joe. Ripped down the line once again, this time foul. Not a few people moving around there. Jim Garman, players, coaches, everybody was sort of scrambling to get out of the way of that one. There's one guy in this building that could have made that play. Drew Bishop. <laughs> Tried to slide step on him right there. Really got to get that ball out of your glove. Quick with the slide step. Because you can't arm can never catch up. No. Leaning over at first. Nothing. Hit well to left field. Down just foul. That would have put another run on the board. Well, if you're going to run after the fastball away, more than likely, this is a breaking ball, so this would be the pitch you're anticipating. Maybe a breaking ball down in the dirt that you can run on. Or pick him off. That's what they try. Making McKenzie work. Well, he's glad that sun's down, I guarantee you. Yeah. to center field. Shaw turns around, back right in front of the warning track, and Bowler was on second base. He will make it back in time. And he did it absolutely perfectly for young players. Get an opportunity to see this replay. Bowler does a great job. He, he goes ahead, uses his speed, gets around the bag at second base. Now watch him. He's reading the ball at the bat. Watch right at second base where it's going to go out of, out of play, but when he came back, he made sure he went right back to the bag, understood he's got to hit the bag again after he goes around it and gets back to first base. To foul territory, Reynolds given a look. Oh, whoa, whoa. whoa, going head over heels into the TCU dugout. I know he'll jump right back up. Where'd he go? He's back. That's scary right there. I like Mosiello, though, telling him good hustle. See, Danny Wheat was a trainer, assistant trainer here. When Ouch. we played here at the University of Texas, Greg, you see him? He was jumping to help, jump up to help right away. He still got a little orange in his he blood. Does, he does. <laughs> Paying a lot of attention to bowl wear. 23 to 26 on stolen bases this year. Balta grad transfer from the University of Oregon. Played three years there. Now bowlers in motion, foul tip. 
but he's got to go back. Well, it's just a matter of time. He, he's <laughs> going he's to try to run. I mean, that's why he's at the top of the order. Had success. And that's just a part of uh, the Horn Frogs' MO. They're, they're going to put pressure on you defensively, make you make plays. I like how they were so honest when we talked to them before the game, saying that they just haven't run as much because they haven't had the opportunities, haven't had the guys on base. See how much Baltic choked up now with two strikes? Really up on that bat. Tom Herman dubbed that the choking pit. Choking pit. That's what he's trying to do here with two strikes. Look at that. O2. Way outside. Hundred thirty nine starts in three seasons at Oregon for AJ Balta. Was looking for a spot to play and to contend. And TCU ended up in a place for him. Started grad school this year. And they've really needed him, especially with the injuries. Somewhat surprising three all hitter for TCU. De facto three hitter, if you will. One two from Sugar. And that one's close, no call. Balt is still alive. A little, a little low. Good pitch, tough to lay off, but right at the end, you see it sink down just a little bit. Just out of the zone. Seven pitch of the at bat. Should be running here. He's tried it once, but had to go back off the foul tip. Another check on young Kobe Bullway. Fifth time he's thrown over to try to get Bullway. Keep him close. But he hasn't gone back to back yet. Base knock to right field. Bullware will halt at second base. Two on, one out here at the top of the fifth. That's a good at bat right there. Really good at bat. Choking up, just trying to make contact. Fouling off some tough pitches. Got one he can handle. Pass these two to take off right here. Either. You're right. And the signal, the reason DJ's out in front of the plate, he's telling to somebody to cover second base because they very well may go in behind the runner. Instead of going to third with the throw and a double steal, they go into second. Set up for Landon Storm. Walking a fly out for him, and Sugar starts him off. The first pitch strike. Chase Sugar tonight. The quality of getting ahead. Throwing first pitch strikes tonight the TCU hitters are one for 14 when he gets ahead first pitch strike first pitch ball they're six of seven have gotten on base Brandon Stoy down 0-2 that's a big number those are big numbers yes right there Coach Pierce likes to stress even more than getting ahead with the first strike, getting ahead with two of the first three main strikes. Take it a step further. About yeah, three for three. Yeah, you like that? That's usually the perfect equation. If you're a guy on the mound like Sugar. Fifth of the night. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Still not out of it here. That's the, the important part here is. You, you got to keep grinding right now. David Pierce going to the mound. He's had 80 pitches. 
Parker Joe Robinson has been warming up. How long do you think Sugar can go in terms of pitch count in a game like this? Oh, we've seen him 112, 120. It starts to wear on you, though. It's uh, still warm, like Zonk said. But I don't, I don't see him reaching 100 tonight. I, it, it's, if he gets out of this inning, I think he'll, he'll come out in the right. sixth for another. We got game three of this series coming up tomorrow, 2.30 Central Time. This could be <laughs> talking about one of the biggest regular season home games in a long, long time, depending on what happens between Oklahoma State and Texas Tech and what happens in this game. And Texas could be playing for a Big 12 title tomorrow. Be sure to join us at 2.30 Central for game three. First inning really took a toll on Chase's pitch count tonight through 34 in that first inning. 9, 7, 13, and 17 so far here in the fifth. Johnny Riser up. Looking at strike one from Sugar. How could he get back on track when things did not go his way? That was the big question mark for Sugar coming into this game. And with all the trouble he ran into in the first, pitched well enough to get out of that inning, allowing one run, but still showing that self-control to get out with it being three runs instead of it snowballing to more. Huge pitch for Sugar here. Trinsky keeps it in front. And we'll do it again. Of the five strikeouts tonight, Chase, two on the fastball, three have been with the breaking ball. Riser fouls it off to keep the fight going. Tried to drop it in on his back foot that time. That's where he fouled it off his back foot. <laughs> One, two to Johnny Riser. Went to Clements. Got him. Now the Horns need some runs. They got the bats to do just that coming up. Top of the lineup due, Hamilton, Ellis, Clemens. We're going to talk to Nolan Kingham when we return. You're watching Texas Baseball on Longhorn Network. Welcome back to Texas Baseball on Longhorn Network. It is 3-1 TCU over Texas, but the Longhorns with that 1-0 series lead, courtesy of this guy right here, Nolan Kingham, coming out with a complete game win, nine innings, six hits, six strikeouts, only one walk allowed. But <laughs> Nolan, we gotta talk about kind of your process to get set for this game. Take me to, through that process of the haircut and the cleats. What was that all about? I mean, uh, Obviously, the way the, year been, the year's been going uh, has been going the right way, but uh, luckily our offense has been picking me up and my defense has been picking me up. So uh, I think it was about time I took matters in my own hand and uh, <laughs> cut the, the flow off and uh, went back to my old ways, and uh, it worked out. Isn't it funny how stuff like that works? I, I did that plenty of times. Yeah. It, it seems to work, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, you know, we say we're not super scissors, but <laughs> whatever you want to call it, it, it works, so I'll take so, it. So speaking of working, what exactly was working for you last night? Because you pitched probably the best game we've seen you pitch this year. Uh, I'd, I'd say for sure just commanding the strike zone. Uh, two seam down, throwing off speed early on in the, in the count, uh, being able to keep them off their toes. Uh, they're, they're a free swinging team, so and, uh, I kept them off their toes and, and uh, just let them early weak contact. That was, that was my goal. 
and uh, try to minimize as much as possible, and that's what I try to do. How's the attitude down there right now in the dugout? Uh, we're, I think we're good. Uh, I think uh, everyone knows that we're gonna Chase is gonna leave it there, and our, our, our offense is gonna work. We're gonna, we're gonna get on this guy, and uh, we have a lot of game left, so a lot, lot can happen. So Hamilton flies out to Shepard for the first out of the inning. So you had some good conversations with your big bro Nick <clears throat> after he's had a really good performance with the Pirates, and what does he tell you after a performance like you just had last night? Uh, I mean, with him, he, he expects that out of us, and uh, the way we handle it, we got to go out there and just compete every day, and uh, it's the same game we've been playing our whole life, and uh, what he always tells me is you don't you don't have to be a big leaguer to pitch like a big leaguer, so, <laughs> so that's, that's what I took in and uh, just wrote with that. Have, have you felt, I mean, you were at his first game, you know, absolutely dealing, and he's been pitching well. Have you felt some inspiration from seeing what he's doing, kind of feeding off of that? Yeah, I mean, always in my whole life, I looked up to him. He's always bigger than everyone. He weighed, uh, he outweighed me by 100 pounds always growing up. And uh, so uh, always looking up to him, and I had a lot of shoes to fill. Uh, but uh, I, yeah, I, I mean, I always pick his brain. It's, ooh, snag. <laughs> there we go. Let's go. Sign him Get up. Get him a uni. <laughs> <laughs> well, he doesn't need a glove. He, he gonna feel that tomorrow. <laughs> so take us through, um, you get out of the eighth, you go into the dugout. Coach Pierce is coming up to you saying, hey, you know, go with Andy right here. Take us through that conversation a little bit. Uh, I mean, I had a good get over it. Get over That's it, baby. Rip. Oh, this is dangerous with the wheels of Ellis. Go Ellis. Hey. Go hey. Better hurry. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's my guy right there. That's my guy. That was big time. What brought him to the feet? I mean, what, why, hey, give him some pop. Give him some slap out there. He's <laughs> playing on the longhorn. <laughs> hey, what, what has clicked with Duke in Big 12 play offensively? I'll say just, uh, I mean, moving from Juco to here, I mean, the game's a bit different speed. I think he, he just it caught up to him a little bit, and he, uh, he tried to do too much, I guess, and now he's just been settling in and just driving the ball wherever the ball's pissed. That's where that's where he's great at, just uh, just being a little pest on, on the in the box and uh, getting under the pitcher's skin, and uh, he's doing a great job at it. That ball was ripped to center field, so a one-out triple by Ellis. We're not gonna get away from when, when Coach Pierce comes up and says, "Hey, we're going to McGuire." Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I, I think the eighth I had, I didn't have that many pitches. Uh, I felt good. The ball was still down. I uh, wasn't really fatigued, and uh, I had a lot of pitches. But he come up to me. He's like, "Hey, uh, shakes, uh, puts his hand out. Hey, we're going to McGuire." And I'm like, "Coach, with all due respect, like, <laughs> this is my game. Like, this has been a long time coming. Like, I want the ball." And he's like, "All right, that's what I wanted to hear. Get after him." Perfect. So, everything worked out. So, <laughs> were you that calm though when you explained that to him? Some would say. <laughs> I, I don't know. The r r rumors get out there, but you know, that's what I said. But he could see in your eye and hear in your voice. You wanted that ninth inning. Yeah, he looked at me and said, "That's that's uh, that's no one I know, and uh, and uh, it's better late than never." So, well, two here to Clements. And yeah, that baby. is a to right. Gone forever. Let's go. God, I'm staying on this mic all game. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Be, be Go do it. Yeah, yeah. Do your thing, Nolan. I'll take it from there. He's got to go get some damn. Cody Clements, the shot to right, ties it up at three. As he's done most of the year, he's, he gets the ball up and it stays in the middle half of the plate. He gets great extension on it. And it was a no doubter when it left the bat. Seventeenth time this season. Seventeenth. We knew he was going to hit some home runs. But we didn't. We didn't. Everything. In the BB Core era, I mean, that's a huge number. Kyle Russell with 18 in 2008. That's when the bats were still juiced. I mean, that's seven games in May. That's unreal. his fourth home run. Yeah. Stay unreal. Kid. Yeah. Wow. Hey, what makes him so good, Nolan? Uh, I, that's what I'm saying. Stay it on the mic, baby. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I would say, uh, I mean, his hand-eye coordination is unreal. I mean, whatever we're playing, 
ping pong, video games, Guitar Hero, whatever. I mean, he's just, he good just flip. excels in everything. And, uh, good flip on the end, too. Yeah. Uh, I would say just his competitiveness. I mean, did you have an idea, Nolan, that this type of season was in the cards for Cody? Uh, I mean, we all knew he was going to do very well, but uh, we always thought that Casey was the uh, the big power guy, and uh, he said, "Hold on, I'll I'll, uh, I'll get a little bit little bit bigger shoes, and uh, and I'll hit more home runs." So uh, I mean, we'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you will. Yeah. So that shot ties up the game at three. And like we said earlier, Nolan, it seems like this crowd here was just waiting for a moment like that to get them into it. What is it like when you guys are playing an important game like this and you do have the crowd into it? I mean, it's just like everywhere we go. We go to Arkansas, we go to LSU, and their crowds are just as big as us. And, uh, and uh, I mean, A&M, A&M is some salty fans. Uh, and, uh, I mean, you, you, you feel it in the back of your head, even though you try to ignore it. You, you know it's there and all that. And... Just, I mean, it, it's, it goes a long way when the fans are on our side, and uh, some guys just can't take it and, uh, and it eats them alive. So, and it's happening right now, so we're just gonna keep rolling with it. How have you guys been able to establish the chemistry on this team, considering 11 guys were lost to the draft? You have three JUCO guys coming in with the rest of the newcomers. I mean, how is this group so tight with so many new faces? Um, a lot has to do with Pierce. Pierce had a lot of a lot of stuff going on in the fall, and it was either we come together and, and we we we, and we, uh, we push through it together, or we get in clicks and get in groups. And uh, we definitely went the right direction early on. And uh, ever since the younger guys stepped on campus, we've always brought them in with open arms, invited them everywhere. And I mean, now nowadays you don't have to ask to come over; people just come over. Our doors unlocked, and everyone just comes over and hangs out, and just big one big family. And the talent show. I mean. <laughs> That's like a bonding experience, is it not? Yeah, I mean, yeah, a lot of guys would, would get all upset about it and won't do it because, you know, it's, it, it's not cool or whatever and they're embarrassed, but not us. We're, we're out there having fun, and uh, it was all fun and games, and, I mean, we love each other, and at the end of the day, we got our backs. And uh, so that's that, that was the main, the main goal for Pierce was to obviously not anyone get upset or basically, I guess, go in the wrong, the wrong direction with it. Well, this group is tight. With comebacks like this, we've seen it continually through the year. So Sean Weimer now checks in for the Horn Frogs. First batter he will face is big Zach Zubia. Works it low. One ball, no strikes. Zubia was a little flat in the rap battle, wouldn't you say, in the talent show? He's white. <laughs> uh, no, he's he's just... He's more of an R&B guy, you know, slow jams. Slow jams. Yeah, he, uh, his, his, his walk-up songs. A little bit, a little bit out of his league, but I guess whatever, whatever gets him in the zone, we'll take it. I mean, he's, he's been having a great year, and uh, he's been contributing a lot. 2 0 -oh count to Zubia. Nope. Who was look, the who was the best in the talent show? Um, I mean, I think I think Andy was definitely the best, but uh, I, I don't think people got to hear actually how good he was. Yeah. So I, it was, he, he was a little bit more, he was a little bit more, you know, has, not hesitant, just more, a little more quiet than usual. He, usually he, he lets it eat, but I think the cameras were rolling on that, and so he was like, just don't mess up. Just hit those notes. Get, a, get five stars on Guitar Hero. <laughs> That's what he was worried about. On the expert level, yeah. it was impressive. And there is a walk to Zach Zubia. When you look at Weimer, he's one of those guys who was brilliant out of the bullpen in 2017. Been moved into a starting role now, coming back out of the bullpen here. He walks the first guy he faces. Got really good stuff. And that's going to bring up Mason Hibbler. Come on. Trying to overthrow. You ever had that feeling, Nolan? What, trying to overthrow? Yes. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, it's easy. It's easy to let it get away. Could you get pumped yeah. up? And you, you try to live up to the moment. You try to do too much. And you obviously, you want to try to overdo too much to make your, you know, make your teammates happy. You get the crowd. Shut the crowd up in this case for him. But, uh, I mean, and that's that's when you got to just be a little bit more mature and settle down. And a great job there by Zach Humphreys to go out there and calm him down. Yeah. 1-0 to Hibbler. 
in for strike one to make it 1 1. How difficult is it for a person like yourself to go through a season? And whether you want to admit it or not, I mean, you, you got the Major League Baseball draft coming up, and your name has been talked about. What is that dynamic like? Uh, I mean, you try, to, you try to just ignore it and just worry about the team and all that. And, uh, I mean, whatever happens, happens. Uh, and, I mean, we're rolling here, so as long, long as we keep winning, hey, I'm, I'm all in with the, the Longhorn. So, I mean, all that, all that can, can wait and all that. And so, I mean, you, you can only go to college once. And so I'm just I'm fully taking it in. Grades were good, everything was good. Oh boy. And so uh, so I'm I'm, in, I'm taking it all in. I'm joining it. Grades as good as Jake McKenzie? Uh, <laughs> I'd say I'm I'm as proud as my grades as he is with his grades. Let's say that. Hey, <laughs> I like that. That's the right <laughs> approach to have. I, I've been trying to get you know academic uh, player of the week and all that. I'm like, hey, coach, man, I got to be on my test. <laughs> uh, Jake Jake just got a 98 on on, a, on four labs. I'm like. Come on, Come Jake. On. So, uh, yeah, I mean, he's a great kid. I don't know how, I don't, honestly, I don't, know, I don't know how he does it. Both of them, baseball and, and school. It is a lot to juggle. He's got that engineering job lined up for himself in San Antonio after his baseball career comes to a close here, and hopefully there's still a lot to play. Yeah. It's trouble. Mess up. Shot good. good. Let's go. Can't barehand it. Reynolds on board. Oh, a squibber. This ball gets to the line and comes comes back comes fair back because of the spin. And with the spin on it down there, Shepard couldn't get a grip on it. Not sure he could have thrown Ryan out. But see that ball hits the line and comes right back in fair territory. Base hit. We got wheels at second. Here we go. <laughs> All kind of wheels on the bases right there. And, and in the box. Here we go. And Zubia with the catcher Petritsky at the dish. You don't got to run that fast when the ball goes over the fence. So with these guys out there, right, who is the slowest person on the team? Uh, <laughs> you know, does he want to say? It's, it's honestly hard to tell. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a solid competition with them three. <laughs> It, it, it can be either, not just these three, it can be any, anybody. Mm, no, it's definitely, uh, no, nah, Stratman's kind of quick. Stratman got, got some wheels. You got a little athleticism in him. All right. I'd say, I don't know, it's, it's, it'd be close with them three. We, we should do it one day. <laughs> I'd like to see it right here. Yeah. See if Ryan catch, catch Zubia, tag him. 1-1 from Weimer to Petrinsky. Nope, nope, nope. He does not go. Make it 2-1. Garman says no, he didn't. <clears throat> well, this is the best hitter's count. And for you as a pitcher, Nolan, when you, you have a hitter 2-1, and one, you know this is the pitch. You've got to make a really good pitch because you don't want to go to 3-1. Yeah, I mean, you try not to do too much right here. You try to just throw your pitch. Don't give in. Especially here, don't give in. So what's your pitch you trust most in this situation? Here on DJ? Uh, I'd go, I'd go in. For sure right here. Long swingish. Don't let him get on it. Oh, big cut. Big cut. Big cut. One, one good thing is that speed on the bases will be going right here. Head start, baby. A lot of lumber. About to start barreling. 32 count for DJ Petrinsky. Nolan King has been the good luck charm on the headset. In motion. And down on strikes. Nolan, we appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks, Nolan. Cody Clemens, yeah, you've seen it before. Delivering, bat flip and all. We're tied up at three here in Austin.
Robinson. Take Shaw, Parker Joe Robinson, Jake McKenzie, Andy McGuire, Josh Sawyer, and George Pappas together in cap and gown as they are Texas graduates. Congratulations. Future very bright in so many different ways for this collection of Longhorns. As Johnny Reiser lays down the bunt, it's off him and foul. If he's in the box at the time that the ball comes back and hits him, he, he's, he's safe. He's okay. He's, okay. he's outside the box and then he's out. But like Nolan was saying, it's it's tough for these guys as student athletes to take on everything they do in the classroom and all the demands on their time and their athletic career. Just to be able to balance all that, to make it happen, and then end up with a degree in hand, that that's an amazing accomplishment. And I think an accomplishment that sometimes we gloss over too quickly. The degree. Yes, yes, sir. Exactly. Well, I will promise you, both of you, the hardest thing I ever did is, is to go away from college for 17 years and come back and get a degree. I was able to do that, but that's the hardest thing I've ever done. I should have stayed. I should have got it when I was young. Uh, so what made it hard? Just getting yourself back into that environment oh. or being the older the last time I've taken a note people were asking him <laughs> people, people were asking Zonk for the syllabus yeah, yeah. <laughs> everybody called me pops <laughs> hey pops you got what's going on <laughs> gotta throw a strike right here you can see how the park he does he does no free pass right here you just put two on the board you put three unanswered Free pass to Riser. And the first time that Shugart has put someone on the free pass since first batter in the second inning when he hit Shepard. See, Zach Humphreys, the first Petrinsky will trot out. Josh Back. Sawyer, the lefty. Parker Joe, he was up earlier. He's ready to go if called for. Right now, though, you like to get Josh Sawyer. Got a lefty, righty, lefty coming up here at the bottom of the order. I think he is ready. Yeah, and Coach Pierce is now coming out. And this is when you start playing matchup. I mean, uh, we're down to a, a four inning ball game. And there's the nod there looking for Sawyer. Pitching change. Sugar done his job. He has righted the ship. We're tied up at three, turning it over to Sawyer when we return. I can't believe it. Texas and TCU tied up at three here on a pivotal and gorgeous night in Austin, Texas. Cody Clements with a couple of lasers, a double off the top of the wall in left center, and then the real game changer. He had that two run home run that we saw an inning ago. Sugar, five innings pitched, four hits, walked three, hit one, struck out five. All three runs allowed in the first inning, and then really after that, guys, he started to settle down. A nine pitch inning followed by a seven pitch inning is much more efficient after that first. Well, you saw the first time through the order, really. Threw four first pitch strikes after that, didn't give up a base runner. Threw eight first pitch strikes in the second time through the order, so settled down and started attacking. Went away from the breaking ball early. Right. It, it, and re, the other reason you make a move right here, Juan Hanen is hitting 176 against left handed pitching. So you, you're also going to start playing the percentage in the matchup now. Both both these staffs have, have, you know, you're this deep. You're over 50 games for both these clubs this season. So you've got good stats on what guys are doing against this matchup. So I, I can see both clubs matching up here in the rest of the ball game with their bullpens. 
Sawyer, recent graduate, 6'3", 220, from San Angelo. 22 appearances on the year, 3.65 ERA. Long road to get back to this point from Sawyer. Multiple injuries derailed his career. He is back and having a very, very good junior season. Juan Hannan. Humphrey's over at first. Show him bunt. Which Hello. Out. Protected himself right there. He did. A scare. Now you flip a curveball in there. <laughs> really scary. Looks this square around. It's coming right back at you. He had his head down in there with it, though. Reynolds playing in over a third. The bunt again. Petrinsky gives a look to second and comes back to first. And there's one down. Something TCU does not do very often. Sacrifice bunt. Good execution right there to put themselves in a position to come up with the base hit here and take the lead again. Be up to the bottom of the order. Oviedo and Shepard, the eight and nine hitters, do up. Bill Moziello. Horn Frogs one for eight with runners in scoring position tonight. Two for 12 in the series. This is outside 2-0. If Josh has had a problem this year, it has been command. When he gets in trouble, has a tough time finding the strike zone. It's good, yeah, cons consistently. One, one, one game he can come in and be lights out. There you go, Hackett right there. You know you're going to get a heater. I like that. You stay aggressive. Fouled out of play, and it's now 3 2. Hasn't thrown a breaking ball since coming into the game. Two fastballs for the bunt, five fastballs here. You got you to think in your mind that as a hitter that this is going to be a fastball. As a pitcher, how do you feel throwing that first breaking ball with a full count? Nope. No fastball. <laughs> Here it is. He went through the breaking ball. And it worked. Down on strikes is Oviedo. It is, this is, like you say, you're probably looking for a fastball. If you can get it close, get that breaking ball close. That was a nasty little slider. Not a, not a strikeout slider, meaning in the dirt slider. But effective because you're looking fastball in that yep. situation. Had another one to the tally. The first of the night from the right, excuse me, the left arm of Josh Sawyer. 
Two outs now for Connor Shepard. Chopped, and Reynolds wisely lets it go foul. Would have been a tough throw to first. Well, you're not going to get an out there, so you're better off. You realize that right away. He says, I let it spin and see what the spin does to it. The bat has been up and down for Reynolds this year. But consistently, going back to last season, the defense has been there in the hot right. corner. He's been exceptional. So go back to that bare hand relay. Last season in the regions. It's just instinct, reaction that played last year. You're not, you don't ever try that. You don't ever yeah. practice that. It's just he, he thought at the moment, this is what I got to do to get this guy. And it worked to perfection. Breaking ball got a big out with it, but it lefty lefty now is going to have to come with the heater. So it sort of evens the matchup when you know fastballs come. 2 1 to Shepard to Clemens. And the second straight inning ends with a runner on and a ground out to second base. Sawyer does his job. It's tied up at three. To the bottom of the sixth, we go tied up at three with Texas and TCU. Longhorns took game one of the series last night. Why is this game so important? Well, specifically for David Pierce and the Texas Longhorns because this is still in play, the Big 12 championship. Coming into the night, Oklahoma State with a one-game lead over Texas. Cowboys and Longhorns both locked into at least the top two spots of the Big 12, but I'd be second when you have that chance. You get the first Big 12 title since 2011. Texas will need some help. They need some help from Texas Tech, and they have just gotten the help from the Red Raiders. It was a 6-4 lead by Oklahoma State. But Greg Swindell just pulled out his phone, just gave me the real-time update. It's now 7-6, Texas Tech. No outs in the fifth. Over Oklahoma State. That's going to go back and forth. That's a lot of baseball <laughs> to be played. It is. A lot of offense whenever Texas Tech and Oklahoma State are involved. But Texas focus squarely is right here. So you see the bug there, 7-6, Texas Tech with the lead in the top of the fifth. Longhorns have gotten the momentum back courtesy of the two spot in the fifth inning. Still a lot of baseball to be played here in this matchup. Got to finish. And you got a guy that's stretched out that for TCU and Weimer might be their best available arm left for this club and into a tie game this part of the game and I, that may be very well have been their game plan is that we can get into this game with him on the mound in a game that's this tight obviously tied right now because he's got really good stuff the game being as close as it is last inning they had Coughlin warming up in the bullpen he's their closer with Felton being out Like Mosiello told us, this is a team that has basically been in playoff mode for the past seven games or so. Oh, they have, and they played good baseball during that stretch. 11 of 13 coming into this series, including a stretch where they won 9 of 10. Dropped the first game 3 to 2, and got another really good one here. Tied up at 3 at the bottom of the 6. Eighth pitch to Shaw. And we're going to have a ninth. Can you feel that when you're facing a team? I don't want to say is maybe in desperation mode, but knows they are playing for their tournament hopes. As Shaw goes down on strike. Dynamite changeup right there. Just outstanding. You're fouling fastball, fastball off, fastball off. Get it close. This thing just at the end is out of the zone. 
Oh, I think I think team, teams are get in desperate mode, no doubt. I mean, they, these young men have, have been to the College World Series four years in a row. They, they came to Fort Worth, to TCU, to, anticipating to going back for their fifth year in a row. If they're a young freshman and the guys coming back say, hey, that's where we end our season is in Omaha. Hopefully we come away with a championship one of these years on these visits up there. So I'm sure two weeks ago when they looked up and saw where they were standing, this, they went into playoff mode. One of the preseason favorites in the Big 12 along with Texas Tech. In a tough year with the injuries, straight back but above us. No chance for the souvenir. Oh, for seven years. Mm. Souvenir ball. Come in the booth. Is this an impossible angle? It gets close. Is that an air horn? I did hear an air horn. No cowbells, though. Can you bring those horns? I don't think you could have them in the stadium. No, you can't. You can't bring them. Stadium. I remember my high school graduation, you couldn't bring them in there. Well, that was a big problem. I didn't know if the same rules applied to a ball game. McKenzie to center field. Riser has a beat on it. Two down. Texas softball in action in regional play up in Seattle. We're in the third inning against Minnesota. No score. So we'll keep you up to date on Donna Clark and her team. First game of the postseason for the Texas Longhorns. Change up. It's been dynamite this end. It's just enough off of it, speed wise. <laughs> Sean Weimer, tough out of the pin. Three up, three down. Hamilton going down on strikes. We got a good one here at the ATX. The eyes. Welcome back to Omaha. Yeah, let's do it, man. Let's do this. That one is going to go. A grand slam. And it's caught. Cool. Oh, no way. That's filthy. The Capone with it. Boom. And they dog pile at the mound. Legendary. The road to Omaha starting. June 16. That kind of gives you those goosebumps, especially for two guys, Keith Moreland and Greg Swindell, that know that road to Omaha extremely well. We'll get into that in just a moment. First off, say hello to P. Joe, Parker Joe Robinson, 6'5, 230 junior, recent graduate, 15 appearances on the year, and a sterling 159 ERA. Well, he's been outstanding. He's been that guy that's adapted. It's taking a while to get to the to dropping down and what he's done by getting down. He's limited the walks. He's done a nice job. And right now you're trying to match up. And that's what exactly David Pierce is doing. Trying to match up, find a way to get this into the ninth inning. And he was so good in the series win against Texas Tech. Twice entered with the bases loaded and got out of two bases loaded jams, only allowing one run. That's, to me, that's perfection. I mean, it is. Your goal, if, when you come in in a situation like that, you, you want to come in, if you can give up zero, that's obviously yeah. perfect. It was a ground ball out. You give up one, that's outstanding. Now, well, the, you keep, keep going further down as you yeah, get Yeah, but the, the, the key to that is to think about it, one of the biggest numbers for relievers in arbitration at, at the big league level to get Make sure they're getting paid their due is they took it inherited runners to score. That is a gigantic statistic. It is. 
Strikeout number one for partner Joe Robinson. Because the first batter he sees tonight, Kobe Bolwer, the leadoff hitter for TCU. The big one I always liked was first hitter, retired. Parker Joe gets that one tonight. Inside to Watson. Came close to hitting him, but does not. 95% of the time, you retire the first hitter, nobody's scoring. Yeah. I mean, now, you come in, man, on bases loaded, one out, and he hits a fly ball. You retired him, he may score. But 90% of the time, you retire that batter, there's no run score. So guys that can do this, how much is the physical makeup? How much is the mental makeup? Relief pitch? Yeah. With those side arm or? No. Do Relief this. pitch. Coming in. This. This, the conversation we're having about guys coming out of the pin and high leverage situations. Hamilton almost had a shot, lays out for it, and Watson on board with his second hit. It's a short memory. You gotta have a short memory. Because just because you struck out the side yesterday doesn't mean you're gonna do the same today, or just because you gave up four runs yesterday doesn't mean you're gonna do the same the next day. It's a short memory. Got to have, in my opinion, you got to have an everyday mentality as you, like an everyday player, like a third baseman or a shortstop. You got to have that thought in your mind: I am going to play today, and I'm, I, you know, I've got to be ready to go every day when I come to the ballpark. You got to be durable. A lot of times you're going to warm up and not even go in the game. You've got to learn that part of the game. You got to learn to pass time <laughs> in the bullpen. <laughs> There's a lot of time down here sitting around. It is nothing going on to chaos sometimes. It's starting to get a little chaotic here for Parker Joe. Back to back singles. Runners on first and second with one out and one, two, three in this TCU lineup. They've done everything. They are six for 11. After that, 0 for 13. Good piece of hitting here back up the middle. That's what you try to do with the sinker ball pitchers we've seen tonight and the guy that throws sidearm like Parker Joe. You can't try to pull it. You try to go the other way or back up the middle. So this is critical, the scenario we're currently in, considering Parker Joe's counterpart, the way Weimer is pitching right now. Oh, there's no doubt about it, dude. It's a big... Landis Story has had a really good senior year, fifth-year senior. Opportunity here. Strike one to land a storm. Texas Tech now up eight to six on Oklahoma State. That's not the last runs that Ali can win. Nope. And irrelevant to tonight's game unless Texas can get the dub. Robinson has him 0-2. What are you coming with right here, Zeke? I like that frisbee again. Start at middle, away. Second talk, thought. Right there. You can you can almost see Parker Joe come set and say, you know, I, I don't like that. I'll go to a fastball away now. Yeah. Oh, that's close. Oh my. You can get fooled as an umpire as well. Oh my. Start the frisbee right there. Ooh, almost had a little low. He was a little low. And the story was giving it a good look as well. 
He's a big dude. His dad wasn't that big, was he? No. Raphael on this court. So you good player. Played with him. Played against him. against. Him. Down on strikes is Landon Storm. Two strikeouts for Parker Joe. That's one we haven't seen much of for Parker Joe. That one that bears in on the righty. This ball just eats up Landon Storm. Starts in, and you just can't catch up with. Two lefties on base have got the base hits. He's got the two righties out in this inning. Four through nine, yet to produce a hit for TCU. Ball one to Riser. Horn Frogs have struggled in this scenario. One for 11 with runners in scoring position tonight. Five strikeouts. And it's 2-0. After Robinson misses low. <laughs> Chopped foul right side. To make it 2-1. Reiser has apparently lost his TCU logo on his helmet. Not sure if that is a mishap or if that's personal style. Little things I notice in the middle of the game. A lot of it is the raised letters. Yeah. The white sharp. <laughs> 3-1 to Reynolds. Head first slide, but for not. Parker Joe out of the pen doing his job. Can he get a little offense from that man? He's provided thus far Clemens with his 17th home run of the year. That tied it up at three. Is number 18 in store. Seven hundred and seventy nine on hand at UFCU Dish Fox Field. Most of them wearing burnt orange. Largest crowd of the year. And what is to this point the biggest game of the year for Texas. Knotted up going into the bottom of the seventh three three. This is probably the biggest regular season home game since this week back in twenty eleven. Back in 2011, it was Texas and Texas A&M. The Aggies entered the series with a one-game lead in the Big 12. As Duke Ellis leads off against Wyman. Texas beat the Aggies in the first game, which was in College Station, behind a complete game from Taylor Youngman. Friday, they came back to the dish and needed a win to ensure at least a tie of that Big 12 title and the top seed in the Big 12 tourney. And Texas delivered. Hobie Milner got the win. And Texas got the share of the Big 12 standings. Number one spot the last time that Texas has been in the top two of the Big 12. Oviedo in time to get Ellis. Barely. Duke that was, speed. Duke was getting down that line. And that will bring up Cody Clemens. How many times has he had the answer this year? Time and time again. Texas needed a little life. 
Sent the ball over the right field fence. Back in the fifth inning, that got this place going and tied the game off at three. And in her conversation with Nolan Kingham, I mean, kind of along the same thought process that we had, we thought it could be a good year for Cody Clemens. We would be lying to you if we told you that we envisioned this kind of season for the youngest. Well, they got the shift boys. on, and Cody's trying to bunt his way on. Take the base hit when you can get it. See the shift in the infield. Mark it up there, Greg. What we got? Not too late. To center. Riser is back. He will have room. Barely. Everything off the bat of Cody Clemens. As you hold your breath, 399 feet. I like he's running all the way. He was at second base. Yeah. The ball was caught. Uh, you know the ballpark. You know you got it on the barrel of the bat. You know that's got a chance to keep carrying. Got a little southerly breeze, but we also have the heat. This turf pushes heat. The ball carries better when it gets warm. Zach would like to see one carry. Well, you got to sit. For me, you're sitting on a high fastball right now, 2 0. Oh. I'm not swinging anything else except something at the belt and something that I, I can lift. Zubia was the first hitter that Weimer faced and walked him. Weimer entered the game and after giving that home the green light here, three and zero as well. Do it. We saw a freshman get a green light earlier in the game on three and zero for TCU. Oof. <laughs> Zubia wasn't even sure if that was a free pass or not. So he's on board. It's really overlooked aspect of his game his ability to work counts and get the free passes big hulking guy like that known for the bombs but been very adept at finding his way on any way out there's Mason Hibbler driven in three in the series so far showing bun initially and strike one from Weimer no doubles down the third baseline Shepard guarding the line. And it's 0-2. Hitler had a solo home run to left field in game one. Also a sack fly to shallow left field that ended up in the glove of Oviedo. Shortstop. Does he have another answer here? Weimer misses. Makes it one two. We'll go back to the curveball. That one waste pitch. It wasted a little too much. Do two good curveballs. See if he throws one right here, maybe down in the dirt. Bosco can go in with a fastball too. Okay. Hibbler to center. Riser is right there. And Weimer is still dealing. Tied up at three as we go to the eighth. Six, seven, eight, up. Oh. GCU. This is baseball on Longhorn Network. It's brought to you by Toyota. Save big on Tundra and visit buyatoyota.com today. Austin, Texas. Home sweet home. Great atmosphere as well for a game that should be played at a time like this here in Austin, Texas. The importance of these late season games back at the dish in season number two under David Pierce. Parker Joe Robinson back on the mound for the second inning. And leading off for TCU, Zach Humphreys. Parker Joe allowed a couple of singles with one out back in the seventh, but got out of it. A 
best case scenario is Parker Joe get through this when you score. You score in the bottom inning, then you go to McGuire in the ninth. If you're Texas. 25 wins at home this season for the Longhorns. Tied with Oklahoma for the most overall in the Big 12. Last year they had 26 wins at home. The most since winning 36 at the dish in 2011. To Clemens. All day, all night. One down. Defense has been clean with the exception of one play by David Hamilton that led to two runs. Backhand in the hole. Throw sailed wide to first base. TCU immediately scored two. That made it a 3 nothing lead. Texas was able to work its way back. Mason Hibbler, an RBI single to center field, made it 3-1. And then the two-run home run by Cody Clemens tied it up. And can't forget about that Duke Ellis triple to center field to proceed the two-run shot by Clemens. <laughs> Got burned right there. They, they, they were playing very shallow, and Ellis put a charge in at the center. That's a good hitter's pitch there, 2 1. He got a pitch to handle now. You got some options. Go back to the breaking ball and sink the sinker away from it. 2 2 to one Hanen. Ripped right above the glove of Cody Clemens. He went all out for that, but well struck by Connor Juan Hanen. One out single to right. First time the bottom of this order has had a base hit in the ball game. <laughs> Cody and I to go, number eight on the Sports Center top ten. There's fine glove work. Almost made it again. Robinson starts off Oviedo with the strike. Started shortstop 0 for 3. All three via the strikeout. It's now 11 to 6, Texas Tech over Oklahoma State. So, adding even more to the importance of these late innings here in Austin. Real opportunity if Texas Tech can hold on and get that win, and Texas can come back and get this one. They will move to the final day of the Big 12 regular season in a tie atop the Big 12 standings. Fouled off by Oviedo. Stay alive. Little for Tech. His last two at bats, two homers, two three run homers. Having a good day. Yeah. 
got to get one under his hands right here. He does. Got him leaning out over there. He's looking to go the other way. One, get a swing and miss. Two, you can get a ground ball. And this infield's been really good at turning double plays. One, two. To Reynolds. Clements. McKenzie. Case in point, turning the double play there, Keith. Well, he got a great, great pitch in on his hands, and the infield turns it. The oh, we've got drama. Late season drama in the Big 12. Oklahoma State one game above Texas in the Big 12 standings. However, they trail Texas Tech 11 to 6. We got a tie game here between Texas and TCU. So if that score between the Red Raiders and the Cowboys holds and Texas can get this win, that will set up a pivotal game three in which a Texas win would give them at least a share of the Big 12 title. But the guy standing in the way right now, Sean Weimer. He's been outstanding since coming into the game. Came in after Cody Clemens tied the game with a two-run home run. Two and two-thirds. One single allowed. And that was that little dribbler that came back and play off the bat of Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> to left. Watson on it. One down. Ryan got a little antsy right there. 2-0 changeup. Eyes got big with the count. Well, hitting with that fastball, you gotta try something. He's got a good changeup. We talked about it last inning. He's throwing it well. This is a perfect time to throw it right there. You know, a guy want, wanting to hit one out of the ballpark, all you do is place it in the right spot. And when he needs it, he reaches back and gets 93 on the outside corner. <laughs> Petrinsky 0 for 3, all strikeouts. Got a good chance to see an Uncle Charlie right here. Fastball out. Tardy on the 0 1. I'd go right back after him. <laughs> That's what he did. Now you, now you can flip Uncle Charlie. To center. Sky, but into the mid of Riser. And there's two down in the bottom of the eight. Texas have put a charge into a couple of them, just too high. What do you mean too high? It was too high. All right, Major League. <laughs> Brings up Tate Shaw with two down. Shaw has walked. Outfield shifted to the right. Towards right field. If you look at the, the initial offering of the hitters or the fielders when you were hitting. Oh, absolutely. Like if you saw them, that would make you think, well, what's my game plan? Throw me what's in, they're going to try to do to you? Absolutely, I did. Another beauty from Weimer, and it's 0-2. With some giddy up on it. Yeah, when you're feeling it like this, you just keep throwing it. Why make a mistake with something else? And Shaw battling. Now 13-6. Texas Tech with the lead. And it's 1-2 to Shaw. 95. He's getting loose. He's feeling it. And the other part, he's been a starter most of the year, guys. So he's stretched out. I mean, he's at 60 pitches now since coming into the game. He's a guy that could 
Gets you into the, the mid 80s for the Horn Frogs. Dynamite pitch from Sean Weimer. His fifth strikeout since entering the ball game. And we go to the ninth, tied up at three. Texas so close to having the shot to play for a Big 12 title tomorrow. Texas Tech, Oklahoma State going its way. They're tied up with TCU at three as we go to the top of the ninth, and the closer is out. He thought he would have a shot to get that save for Nolan Kingham last night. Kingham won that argument with Coach Pierce, the conversation, I should say. Now Andy McGuire coming in. The biggest situation of his Texas career, arguably. He's been a breath of fresh air out of the bullpen, as Bo Ridgeway was last year. Andy McGuire is that this year. He's just confident, throwing the ball well. Throws hard, got a good sinker, good slider. Really goes after hitters. Changes his speed so well, and his, his, the speed of his windup so well. He'll quick pitch you a little bit, come set, hold. Doing a lot of different things to disrupt the rhythm and the timing of the hitter. Now you're in a, a scenario here where you've got nine, one, two, two for the Horn Frogs. Shepard leading off. He is the nine hole hitter. He's reached safely once as he was hit by Sugar back in the second. Ball one from McGuire. Now 3-1. Andy McGuire. Quite the odyssey. And a career that began at the University of Texas. Took him to Juco Ball in South Carolina. Back here to Austin where he was just going to be a student. Came out. Tried out for the team. Did not make it. Broke through. Got his shot this year and has been a vital part of the makeup of this team. Back to the top of the lineup. Bullware is up. Shepard over on first. And first pitch strike. Be surprised to see hit and run even with a strike on the batter. TC will press the issue. Shepard four for four and stolen bases this year. Ball we're at the plate, the most speed on the team. Briefly shows bunt. That's called for ball two. It's two one now. So if you thought about hit and run, this is the perfect count to do it. Runner in motion, hit and run is on. Hamilton looks to second, fires to first to get the sure thing. There's one down, like he called for, Keith. Aggressive approach here for TCU. Well, it's so many different things that does for you. If that ball's hit well and into the gap, you score a run. If it gets the defense to move a little bit, it's in the right spot, you're first and third and nobody out. 
but the one thing that bigger than anything else it stays away from the double play it gets you a guy in scoring position for your best bat so far tonight Josh Watson was a double and a single and he's followed by Balta who leads with three hits uh, you, you really pick your poison here I really like pitching around Watson here maybe even giving the four the four passes Watson is going to take his time. So there is a free pass, not the way he intended it, and a painful one for Watson. It sets up that double play, but you do have to try to get that induced off the bat of A.J. Balta. He's got three singles and a line out. Ball one. McGuire struggling with his control. And here comes David Pierce. He's just missing his Andy. Balls have been close, just not getting the call. This is more for me, this is this is Coach Pierce trying to make sure he gets everybody on the same page here. All right, we think some of these pitches are strikes. You got to forget about that. Go back to what pitch that we've discussed over the scouting report how are we going to attack this guy and go back to it right here and try to stay within the game plan Waylon and Elber getting warm ball to five for eight with the home run in this series, hitting 358 with runners in scoring position this season. And he stands in with a 1 0 count. Outside strike call makes it 1 1. Shepard on second. Watson on first. TCU has not scored since the first inning. Petrinsky working hard behind the plate all night. Since coming into the game, Greg Andy has not had real good command of his breaking ball. To center field. Shaw is on it. And there's two down. Everybody stay in put. Big, big out for Andy McGuire. Well, he's out front a little bit, but he kept his hands back there. A bullet. Bar barreled it up. There. So two outs now, two on for Michael Landestor. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for him. One swinging, one looking. He's reached safely once. Drawn the bases loaded walk from Sugar back in the first. Guard misses low, 1-0. Heads up play, using the big body. Ryan Reynolds leaving everybody where they were. Going to the bottom of the ninth, Texas with a chance to walk it off. 9-1-2, McKenzie, Hamilton, Ellis, then Cody if they can get there. Big 12 title hopes on the line as we go to the bottom of the ninth. That guy has been the issue for Texas. Sean Weimer back on the bump since he entered the game. He has really shut down the Texas bats. Looking for a little Rocky-like comeback here. 
to the long TC bullpen the last two nights. Six innings, just one hit, three walks, and seven strikeouts. Yeah, they've been really good. And Weimer's been that way tonight. He's out here for the bottom of the ninth to face the ninth hitter in the order. So Texas Tech leads Oklahoma State. A Texas Tech win coupled with a Texas win will give the Longhorns a chance to at least share the Big 12 title with the win tomorrow. McKenzie first pitch swinging. That's fouled out of play. The Longhorns have not won the Big 12 title since 2011. Have not finished better than fifth place in the past five years. What if Jake got a older one? That would be his graduation walk. Yeah, yes, instead walk of away. walking the stage, walk off. walk off home run for Jake. Ooh. Vicious. That's nasty. I thought that was going to be a fastball around the neck high. It just dropped off the table. McKenzie not walking. His graduation ceremony tonight to be here at the dish in a huge game with Big 12 to. implications. He was trying to. Shave to Jake McKenzie, and it's 2 2. 16 come from behind wins for the Longhorns this year, and has really become this team's identity. Fouled out of play for McKenzie, still taking his hacks. Well, I think he's going to see the curveball again right here. Yep. Why we're just trying to overthrow that one previous one. Nope. 94 from Weimer and McKenzie. Strikeout victim number six. Top of the lineup, David Hamilton. Gonna be going up against the guy that's confusing everybody. Meeting on the mound. Cody you got Sarlos. three left-handers in a row do. Weimer's been nothing short of spectacular. No activity in the bullpen. Remember, they're going to go to the bullpen. They had a left hander warming. He was ready to go. Wow. So Weimer has been pretty much as good as you can be out of the pen in a critical game. Now they're going to go with the matchup. Go with the lefty. So the way this was set up, Texas. Tied the game with a Cody Clements home run. TCU goes to the bullpen, and Weimer went locked out. Weimer had it working tonight. After the first inning, he really found the breaking ball, found his changeup, but more importantly, we found the fastballs on. He was 94, 95 miles an hour. Well, he did a nice job of spotting his fastball, had a good angle on it, but boy, he gave exactly to the Horn Frogs exactly what they needed. At, at, at that point, I mean, obviously they had a 3 nothing lead. He came in the game. Texas came back to tie it up. But, boy, he gave them some depth right there. That That is just an outstanding job in the bullpen. And now, go back a few weeks ago. Remember, a similar type of situation. Big game for Texas against Texas State. Who do they bring to the plate? David Hamilton. Bases loaded. Walk-off grand slam. Hamilton has some serious pop. This is another opportunity for one of the most impressive players that we've seen in this year for Texas. Huge, well, he's had huge. a really good second half of the season. There's yeah. no doubt with the front, but he's facing a left-hander here now, guys. So that changes Wait, What does that do to the approach? Wait, it just changes. You see ball from a different angle. When you lefty-lefty matchup, all of a sudden the breaking ball becomes more involved instead of the fastball. All the pitches that he's hit out of the ballpark this season have been fastballs from a right-hander. So that, again, you get to the 50th game of the year, Lowell, both of these clubs have every one of the stats 
that, that we've got. So they've got matchups and know that David has struggled against left handed pitching. And it's Augie Milbauer, freshman, in to face David Hamilton. 22 innings with an 08 ERA. So this was the David Hamilton walk off grand slam. This was after Texas lost the series against West Virginia. They were down by five going into the bottom of the ninth. And Hamilton left the park in a hurry, capping a five run bottom of the ninth. Get the win. This will be a ground out to Bolwer at second base. So can Duke Ellis give Cody Clemens a shot to walk this one off? Last time up, he grounded out. But before that, it was a triple to center field. And Riser is playing much deeper than he was on that triple. Cody waiting for his shot. And Milbauer starting fast against Hamilton. Starting fast here against Ellis. This is gonna be tough. Ellis has the wheels. He's there. Duke's got faster as the years go on. Wow. Sm smells that base hit right there. This is the first baseman dive for it. He put it in extra gear right there. He's got to outrun the pitcher. Speed. Yeah. Got to outrun the pitcher. And clearly beating the foot of Milbauer to set up Cody Clements. Called strike one. Taking that one to the left field line. If he throws that one again, Duke Ellis can walk home. We're playing way off the line. Back inside, but misses. One ball, one strike. He has taken that pitch deep four times this year against left hand. Yes, he has. One, two to Clements. kid right there that wants to make sure with the draft coming up tomorrow is not the final time he plays at the dish and with that walk off that gives Texas a real shot to be playing here in Austin when the tournament opens well there's no doubt about that if they if, if you win tomorrow even if Oklahoma State win comes back tonight or loses or 
loses tonight and wins tomorrow, you're going to have a share of the title. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's, that's the home run. Yes, we love that. But set up by Duke Ellis. Duke Ellis getting down the line and then taking this breaking ball from Milbauer. Again, Cody Clemens, what, what can you say? Honestly, one of the great seasons in modern Texas baseball history. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I think that right there, he was in discussion anyway for Big 12 Player of the Year. I think this could probably do it right here. Solidify his. <laughs> Nolan put the, <laughs> he put Nolan the put headphones the on. And it works. I think they, I think they got something going down there now. Listen to the curtain call. runs for Cody Clemens the most since Kyle Russell in 2008 back to the second game of the series against Kansas State. Texas is down going into the ninth and with two outs they score seven runs to tie the game. Goes to the bottom of the ninth they lose that game. But that was the first time that we really got a glimpse of the fight that this team is made up of. And since that point in time this has been a team that's been down, but they have not been out. No kick him. It's, it's the headphones, head baby. baby. I mean, this team with so many newcomers, there, there's something special here. The way this group plays was so much on the line in situations where they struggled last season. It is. Close games. It, you win one, you come back from another, it builds confidence. And, and when it starts to happen, you start to realize, hey, we're not out of this. We're, we're never out of this. They were, you said they were down seven runs today. They were being whooped. They were three nothing until the fourth inning. Then all of a sudden it starts to go and go and go. And then it's set up with Duke Ellis running the ball out to first. It set up the heroics for Cody here in the ninth. Well, let's talk to Cody Clemens. Cody, you got us? All right, he's still getting his headset. The headset that he had to take back from Nolan Kingham, right. by the way. So yet another walk-off win. And the situation that you have right now is that Texas Tech is leading Oklahoma State. So if Texas Tech can hold on and win that game, that means with the win in game three tomorrow by Texas, they will get at least a share of the Big 12 title. Folks, this has not happened since 2011. This is a big deal. And even regardless of what happens tomorrow, this gives Texas a real shot to host a regional, something they also have not done since 2011. And you go back to the theatrics, the heroics of Cody Clemens. You cannot write a better script to the season for Cody. Uh, Cody, yes. you're joining us now. I mean, are, you are you kidding me? Yeah. I mean, seriously. Oh, what? <laughs> Just this is what you dream about playing baseball. <laughs> Nolan it Kingham is. is nuts. There's a lot of people, Cody, I mean, you're, you're lost for words. We had David Hamilton on after he hit the walk-off Grand Slam, and he was at a loss. He's like, I just don't know what to think. I, you're still in the moment where you really don't know, did, this, did that really just happen? Did it really just happen? I, I think we're still in that moment. Well, we are, and we want to know, <laughs> did it really happen? Now nah, he's got to worry about the shaving cream. And this is the moment we're talking about. Well, after the fastball that he swung through upstairs, Cody's a, a smart young man. He hasn't seen the breaking ball in the at bat. The first thing you, in your mind is, you know, I think he'll try to slip a little breaking ball, and he left it in the middle part of the plate. And 
Cody, I, I, I know that uh, you're, you're coming back. It, it had to be in the back of your mind. You, you swung at the high fastball that you might be able to drop that little breaking ball in there. Was that something you were thinking about? Yeah, I actually was. Uh, I knew that he threw me that fastball, I fouled back, and then uh, he knew that he shouldn't have done that, and then I was sitting on curveball, <laughs> and you know, he just flipped it in, I just put a good swing on it, but unbelievable, this team's amazing. I love every single one of these guys, and you know, we're getting excited for these, uh, the posts here, and see what happens with this regional, so I'm excited, but you know, we're having fun out here, obviously, and uh, we're loving seeing the dish packed, it's a lot of fun. So you said this team is amazing, and I think we're picking up on that, that chemistry, the camaraderie, from your perspective, what is it that makes this group, in your words, amazing? Nobody nobody gives up on each other. You know, we all have faith in one another. And, you know, when anybody's in the box or anybody's on the mound, we know they're going to give it their best shot. And uh, we all believe in one another. And it's been, you know, really nice to have that type of team and that t those type of guys in the dugout that, you know, have faith in one another. Well, to get you to the plate, you got to talk about a teammate in front oh, of you. Yeah, hustling Duke, to get the base in. Trust me, I gave him a big old hug. But uh, yeah, it was unbelievable. Duke's really fast and I was a really good at bat. And you know, just put me up there and not had that opportunity to do that. What is the significance of this win in terms of what you think this group is playing for right now? Yeah, no, it was this type of environment was huge for us. You know, we've been trying to get the dish packed and uh, this was a regional type environment. And, you know, we're playing TCU, they're a really good team. and. Uh, you know, they're putting together good games uh, that we will, you know, experience later in the postseason. So, you know, it's, it's good to have this type of experience for the younger guys, and, you know, we're looking forward to the postseason. Do you have any idea what's going on between Texas Tech and Oklahoma State right now? I know the situation that if, you know, if we have to win this series and they have to get swept or vice versa, um, but I don't know. I haven't checked the score. Are they, are they, is Tech winning? So Tech is up. Let's go. 13-6 so, Tech you right know, now. It's, so. it's all to us. You know, we just got to keep, you know, don't worry about that. Just focus on tomorrow. What did you think about the way Chase Sugar pitched and it got a little bit of trouble in the first inning, but the way that he recovered from that, where did he show you? Yeah, it was unbelievable. Chase, out of, I mean, out the gate, you know, he struggled a little bit, but being able to bounce back and, you know, put the zeros up on the board the next pass three or four innings was really huge for us. And, uh, you know, we could get, you know, stay in the game and just keep tacking on runs and see what would happen. But he did an amazing job tonight. Cody, the only thing I got to say, I give the bat flip a three on that last one. <laughs> Thank no. you, Lowell. They're always a 10. When they, when you, they're, they're game winners. They're 10s, bro. <laughs> hey, that was one of our favorite segments we had, grading the bat flips. We, we, we look forward to more of those. Cody, that was an awesome moment. It was, uh, it was special to see that happen in this environment here at The Dish. Congratulations. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Unreal. I, I mean, <laughs> the standings right now, it's a half game. And if it holds the way it is right now with Texas Tech and Oklahoma State, we still got uh, some time to go in that game. Yeah. That will set up Texas to at least get a share of the Big 12 title with a win tomorrow. I mean, we're talking about boys. Well, one it, of the it, biggest if, games if in a Oklahoma while here. Loses in tonight, and both Texas and Oklahoma State lose tomorrow. They still have a share of the title. Yeah, yeah. So, but to win it outright, but to have control yeah. of it, that's what we're talking about with Texas tomorrow. So, folks. It's a big one. Come out to the dish, watch it, 2.30 Central Time on Longhorn Network. Nolan King, you ain't taking the headphones away from him. I'm sorry, that ain't happening. Texas looking for the sweep against TCU coming up in Saturday's Game 3. Cody Clemens says goodbye.